guys, welcome back to my channel and another video here. Today's a video I've been like dying to film. I'm really excited because I'm going to be reacting to your unpopular nail polish opinions. This is something I see a lot done in like the beauty space and like other types of YouTube, but I don't know if I've ever seen it done in nail YouTube. I'm not really sure. And I just thought, why not start a little drama? So that's what we're doing today. A while back, I asked you guys over on Instagram for you to send me your unpopular or controversial nail polish opinions. And that's what I'm gonna be reacting to today. It'll all be anonymous. Don't worry, I'm not gonna say anybody's name. But like, I have never gotten so many responses responses on an Instagram story and you guys kind of went in so they got a little spicy. Before we jump into all that though, I did want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Ana Luisa. Now I've talked about them on my channel before, but if you're new here, Ana Luisa is a carbon neutral jewelry brand and they use recycled materials in a lot of their stuff. And that is from the jewelry to the packaging itself. Like for example, the box that this came in is made out of 100% recycled paper. I really like that about this brand. They're trying really hard to maintain a sustainable business model. Even some of their jewelry uses recycled metals and I have a piece today to share with you that contains that. Currently, Ana Luisa is having a sale on their website and that extends to December 20th. I also have a code in my description. So if you go to my description box, click the link and then add the code MEDIOCREMANNIES20 at checkout, you can save 20% off your order. These pieces do make really great gifts and there is something for everyone. They have stuff that's more simple, more sleek, which is kind of what I'm gonna show you today. That's the kind of stuff that I really like. And then they have things that are a little bit more on the ornate side for your little fancy friends. So they do have a really wide variety of elegant looking jewelry pieces. Today I have three new pieces I wanna show you that I got to pick out from their website. The first are these Hana Lee earrings, which I'll show you close-ups of. These are 14 karat gold plated over brass, and they do have little tiny cubic zirconias on them. I also have a couple of rings as well. Rings are my favorite kind of jewelry to wear, so I was really excited to pick out a couple of their rings, and again, I'll show you some close-ups. First, I have the Amara Black, and I wear a size nine ring if that matters to you. It has 14 karat gold plating over brass, and again, with the cubic zirconia in the center, and then black onyx for that black fill in the background. And then on my other hand, I have the Capella On, again, a size nine, and this is also 14 karat gold, and this is plated over recycled sterling silver. You can see it also has some very tiny cubic zirconias embedded in these kind of starburst prints, which I thought was really dainty and really cute. And I absolutely love this ring. So if you are interested in checking out Ana Luisa, go down to my description box and click that link. And if you do end up picking out something for yourself, don't forget to use that code MEDIOCREMANNIES20 to save 20% on your purchase. But with all that said, let's hop into your guys' unpopular nail polish opinions. Okay. I figure I should probably start with my own so that you guys don't think that like we're on uneven footing or something because I have a lot of hot takes in every aspect of my life and nail polish is no different. So my very unpopular nail polish opinion is that I don't think that cold shoulder, which I'm wearing on my nails right now, is really that big of a deal. I don't care about it. I don't see why everybody lost their marbles over it being abruptly discontinued, especially because in like the indie sphere, sometimes collections get a single run and then once they're gone, they're gone, like that's it. And I know Holo Taco is technically boutique or whatever, but still it's not that it's, it's a frosty blue. I don't know, sorry, Nick, he loves this polish. So he's gonna come for me after he watches this video. Mine did also recently change color and I actually like the color of the discoloration more than the original. So that's probably another hot take, just, Two for the price of one. So I have all your guys' hot takes here on my phone. So if you see me like looking down nonstop, I'm reading them. So so the first one I got is flooded cuticles in a completed man manicure picture. Worse, when the extensions underneath are thick and lumpy. Yeah, so I definitely would never say anything to anybody if they post a flooded cuticle manicure because I'm like, whatever, we're all just trying to have fun. But I do cringe a little bit when I see super flooded cuticles because I'm like, just five more seconds, just clean it up, it's fine. But at the end of the day, it's not a big deal. It shouldn't affect me as much as it does, and I know that. And so I'm just like, just keep scrolling. I even like a lot of the pictures because I'm like, the color's still pretty. Okay, the next one is, 
Cirque brushes freaking suck. I've had to replace most of mine for a pricey polish that's not very cool to have a wonky, twisted up, unusable brush. So I personally don't have an issue with the Cirque brushes. I know a lot of people really don't like them though. They are very, very thin. But I've never been one to be too frustrated with the skinny brushes. However, I do agree that it is kind of unusual for something that expensive to not at least have like a medium sized brush. I feel like a medium sized brush is the perfect kind of area. Like that's like the gray area. Just put it in the middle and then nobody can really complain about you. <laughs> I've never had quality control issues with my Cirque brushes though. They just, they're just skinny for me. <laughs> I hate hollow. I, I don't hate hollow, but man, that is, you're brave. You're brave for saying that. I, I don't hate hollow, but I never really actively find myself caring about it. When I first got into nail polish, I felt like I had to have hollow. I also think that's because Simply Nail Logical was one of the first YouTubers that I watched pretty like repeatedly. And for her, hollow was a big deal. And for a while I was like, oh, I'm supposed to like hollow. I have to like hollow. This is a hobby you have to like hollow in. And then I just realized I don't I don't dislike it, but I just don't care. And so while I do, I find linear hollows really pretty, I don't actively feel like I want to buy them because they just seem kind of boring to me. However, how a lot of people feel so passionately about hollow, that's how I feel about flakies. So I could be just as annoying. Okay, this person's opinion, stamping seems boring and uncreative, also a waste of money because I never like all of the images. Okay, so the first sentence, the boring and uncreative, that's something I actually, I don't agree with because I feel like stamping is a lot more accessible for nail art. However, when I do stamping, I'm always like, wow, you suck at nail art so bad that you can't even like do freehand. You have to resort to stamping. And I feel like bad because I'm like, oh, this negative self-talk. But there are some people who do such creative things with stamping. Like Chills Thrills Beauty on YouTube and Instagram her stamping manicure, she mixes a lot of like textures and finishes and stamping plates and stuff. And just, she puts together these really cool and well curated stamping manicures. And I'm always so jealous because for me, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna put down a base color and then I'm gonna stamp a different color. And that's my manicure. So I feel like stamping, you can get really super creative with it. And I do like that it makes nail art accessible for people like me who can't freehand. As far as being a waste of money though, I, I can agree with that. If you're not careful, stamping can cost a lot of money. I feel like there are plates that I've bought and bought and I bought because I only liked a single image and that's a huge waste of money. If I like 80 to 90% of the images, I'm totally happy with it. I don't mind that there's a few that I can't or won't use, but I actually, I really do enjoy stamping quite a bit. I just, it's getting myself to do the stamping. That's the hard part. Ugly nail polish is the prettiest nail polish. And there's a, this emoji and a poop emoji. So obviously I agree with that. I a hundred percent agree with that. I. If you haven't heard me, if you're new here, uh, all I do is talk about like Elysian Fields and it being my new favorite polish of all time. That's an easy sell for me. I love ugly stuff. Textured polishes feel weird, so I still top coat them, defeating their purpose. <laughs> Honestly, like I, I do top coat some textured polishes because I find that especially like grittier textured polishes, they chip faster on me. So it depends on the purpose I'm wearing it for. If I'm only going to wear it for a day or so, then I won't top coat it. But if I need some sort of longevity, like I want protection on my nails, the ultimate protection for me is a Zoya Pixie Dust with a base and a top coat, and that will last forever. A lot of indie polishes have too much going on in them. I actually, I agree with this, despite the fact that all I do is buy those too much going on in them polishes. I noticed this a lot more when I started doing my polish pickup wish list with me because I'm sitting there reading the description of the polish and it's like, it has this and this and this and that and this and that and this and that and I'm like, <sighs> And then I have to pause the filming and go and get a glass of water because I'm like, oh my God, I said too many words all at once. Like it stops making sense in my brain. I don't like one coat black if I'm doing a full mani. Compared it to two coats of Orly's Liquid Vinyl and the experience is better. So I only wear one coat black on every finger or like on a whole finger if I'm gonna be layering a ton of other stuff over it 
Otherwise, I completely, yeah, I agree. I, I also have oily liquid vinyl. And if I just want like a plain black manicure and I'm going to put like gems or something in it, not like full toppers, then I will use the Orly over the One Coat Black from Hollow Taco. This one is, and I got, I got a lot like this. So let's just have this one be the all encompassing one. And it says, I don't like Hollow Taco, both the polish and the owner. So Obviously, I buy I buy Hollow I buy Hilo Taco. I'm wearing Hollow Taco on my hands. I don't have an issue with Christine or Simply Nail Logical. I know that a lot of people feel how would you describe it? Some type of way about her, and I think a lot of that stems from not her but her fans. I find that a lot of times when I dislike somebody or something like a celebrity or a show that everyone loves, I realize later on it's. It's not the person, it's not the show, the movie, the book, whatever. It's the fans, it's the stands. And that's why I feel like sometimes Hello Taco really does rub people the wrong way because a lot of the diehard fans act like Hello Taco is the only brand that's allowed to exist and it's the only good brand that's out there. And you and I both know that's not the case. There are plenty of good brands. There are better brands. There are worse brands. There are brands in between. I don't know. It's just, I definitely don't like the business model anymore. I actually, I didn't like it from the beginning. I don't like this constant surprise drops. And I know she's adjusted it in the time since the beginning, but it's still not enough for me. And I think I said in another video, but I am no longer planning to buy every single release from Hollow Taco. I'm focusing my energy elsewhere. And that's not because I hate the brand. It's just, I outgrew it, I guess. And I, I don't even know if I ever really was the target demographic. Wildflower Lacquer's formula is very thick. So I only have one Wildflower Lacquer polish and that one is actually quite thick, but I can't speak to any other polishes from the brand because I only have the one. So I can agree with you on a single polish basis. <laughs> I die a little every time someone calls a cool and unusual green, yellow, brown a baby poop color. Yeah, I don't like the word. I don't like to say it. I hate that letter. Makes my lips uncomfortable. So yeah, I also hate that. I hate when anybody likens anything to feces, to be quite honest. It's gross. Yeah, no, we. I agree with you. Let's just leave it at that. All cream polish collections are not boring and they can be really exciting if they're well curated. I agree. I don't have anything against full cream collections at all. I think that a lot of bigger brands tend to fall back on what's comfortable though and they'll just do kind of the same iterations of the same thing. And it's always kind of like a rainbow cream collection of some sort, whether it's pastel rainbow, neon rainbow, whatever rainbow. And then when it comes to indie polishes, and I'm fully guilty of this, but like when it comes to indie polishes, I'm just like, why would I buy creams from an indie? They have other more interesting stuff. And so I don't even really pay indie cream brands any mind. And I want to change that because I've heard good things about some brands, but I just, it's this mindset where I'm like, I can get a cream from Sally Hansen for like $3. So why would I spend 10 on an indie cream? Even though I fully know a lot of times they're better quality. So ordering nail polish from Europe costs a ton of money and it's basically overpaying. Okay, so this is somebody who lives in Europe and like ordering nail polish, I think from the US to Europe is what they're saying. Yeah, oh yeah, 100%. It is way too expensive. Just not even nail polish, just shipping in general. I remember the first time when I lived in Japan that I received the package that they made me pay customs and duties on. And I was like, Ex excuse me? What? No, 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 I'm American. I don't do that. What are you asking me for? It was devastating. And then I had to go get exact change for the mailman. And then I called my boyfriend and I was like, never do that to me again. <laughs> so yeah, no, I feel for, even in Canada, I feel like we're right next door. This should not be an issue, um, but it is. And I just don't understand why it costs so much. And I ship stuff regularly for my job. So I probably should understand that, but I, I don't. Peely popping videos are just vomit emoji just stop a hundred percent agree i think it's so gross i don't i think it's because like this is gross but when i wear a peel off base coat when i remove the polish like it's warm it's it's like warm in there underneath in between the polish and the nail and it's just it's gross it's so gross i hate it ever since the beginning when Simply Neological would do like the peel porn thing i was just like bro gross come on like come on yeah, I hate them. And I hate the bags of the peelies. I hate it. It freaks me out. Throw that away. This is coming from the girl who has her teeth in a display cabinet. So maybe 
I'm the last person who should be talking crap about this. <laughs> Having a large collection and owning multiple backups of a polish, you'll never even use up the first one. Yes, 100%. I agree. I used to have a few backups of polishes, not even on purpose. I've never intentionally bought a backup of a polish. I've bought a couple accidentally. Um, and then I just ended up, I was like, I'm never going to use these. Why am I keeping these? So I gave them all to my sister. <laughs> and I just, I just feel like unless you absolutely know that it's a color that you go through, like I've had some people comment on my videos like, oh, I've gone through my fifth bottle of this or whatever. It's like, you are different. You're the exception to the rule. You know that you go through this polish, so that's fine. But for me, like with Chin Chili, right? I knew I loved that polish, but I didn't buy a second bottle until the first bottle was in the trash can. Like, I just don't see the point. And now, especially my collection is, it's big. <laughs> it's gotten really big in the last year. There's no way, there's no way I will ever need a backup of a polish. And if I get through a polish that I love dearly, by that point, I bet you, I bet you I can find something similar if it's been discontinued. So I'm not super worried about it. Reflective glitter is an overhyped polish that costs more for one good picture. I, that was my opinion when I first saw reflective glitter. And then I was like, well, let me just try one just so that I, cause if I don't like something or if I want to rag on something, I like to experience it first to know that I fully do hate it because there's nothing worse than saying something sucks and then finding out that you love it, right? And then you have to admit to everyone, like, oh, sorry. I did end up picking one up and I was like, okay, I do like it, it is fun, but I do still think it's a party trick. And then I started acquiring more, not of my own volition. I got a bunch from Polish and Beauty Expo in my swag bag and stuff. And I started to realize that reflective glitter does catch the light just a, just a little bit, a little bit more than your regular glitters. So I don't hate them but I just don't got on my way for them because I'm just like, they're pretty and I like to wear them, but I'm not gonna buy them proactively. Like I'm not trying to buy them. Oh, you know who you are that told me that purple is overrated and I already had words with this person. Uh, I absolutely disagree. So you're wrong, moving on. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I think that I was dangerously like like this close to becoming one of those purple people like Marie from Breaking Bad who everything in their home is just purple for some reason. Those people are wild. I love I love the dedication. Um I love purple. It's a great color. Nail photos with the thumb don't ever look nice. I have tried and failed many a time. Dude, how how do people take thumb nail photos? Like I can't do it. Cuz like I got big old hands and it's like my thumb doesn't really bend in there right and then there's like that one like cursed have you guys seen that that went around a little while where like people were doing like this this looks psycho this looks crazy like maybe I should start doing that yeah I can't do thumb hand poses and honestly I'm kind of glad that I can't because when I do like swatch photos when I'm sitting down and taking batches and batches of swatch photos I don't paint my thumb I don't think most people paint their thumb I just paint the four fingers that you see and then I make sure my thumb is out of the image. There's no point in buying thermals. I agree and disagree, like depending on your situation. My situation is I have almost 2000 nail polishes and there is no reason, there's no good reason for me to A, buy any more nail polishes, but that's not gonna happen. And B, there's no reason for me to buy a thermal because thermals have shelf lives. I've gotten a few new subscribers recently that are always asking me like, oh, why don't you like thermals? Because I'll mention it in like a polish pickup video. It's not that I don't like thermals, I love thermals. I think they are so much fun. They're so cool. I actually did just buy one, the Coors Light one. The problem with thermals is they die. As simple as that, you know, they die and then they're stuck in one color forever. And so I don't want to spend a lot of money on something that I won't get the use out of it that I feel it deserves, you know? Magnetics suck way too much to work with unless you're making a gel mani, which isn't for everyone. So I used to feel like I hated magnetics because I just didn't understand how people were getting the imagery that they were. And then I realized a couple of things. One, some of these people are editing their photos. They have to be, like, there's no way. Two, someone said they were pretty sure, somebody told me they were pretty sure that a lot of people who swatch magnetics make a decal on their mat and they leave the magnet under it while it's drying the whole time. So that's why their lines always look perfect. And three, I just was doing it wrong. Like I wasn't doing the right things in order to get like the perfect look. And so I've learned since to shake the bottle more frequently as I'm painting my nails, 
have a little bit more patience, things like that. And sometimes I just do the ring finger as like an accent magnetic and then the rest are just unmagnetized. So that's helped my stress levels. Glitter Crellies are hideous 90% of the time. Yeah. They are. I want to like them. I like some glitter crellies a lot. Like Cadillacer, I feel like does an amazing job because I feel like the color of the glitter shines through. But sometimes you just have these crellies where I think specifically the white ones I don't like. They just make it look a little bit murky. You can't really see the full color. It looks a little bit weird. So I'm not a huge fan of glitter crellies, although there are exceptions to that. Anti-cuticle nipper elitists are annoying liars. Well, you're trying to come for me right now. Um, No, I, I disagree. I can see why you think that though, but I am 100% like don't nip your cuticles, like don't do it unless it's dry skin hanging off the edge of your nail. I try not to cuticle nip it. It's definitely tempting. I definitely want to, but the few times that I've tried, I cut live skin and it is painful and it looks really bad and it gets infected because your hands are always in it and my hands are always in everything. I don't know about your guys' hands. I'm just always touching everything. So yeah, I don't knit my cuticles. I push them back. I use a cuticle solvent and that's it. The only thing I use my cuticle nippers for is like I said, the dry skin that kind of comes up on the edge of my nails. People sometimes hate on Hollow Taco just to be contrarians. Yeah, I definitely think that. I feel like whether you absolutely love Hollow Taco or you absolutely hate Hollow Taco, like there's a really passionate group on either side and it's really hard to say an opinion about Hollow Taco without somebody getting mad at you. The Zoya scattered hollow shades like Merida, Storm, etc., are not worth the hype. I bought Merida solely because everyone was like, you have to have Zoya's Merida. You have to have it. It's iconic. And you know what? I think I wore it one time and I was like, this is pretty. And I never thought about it again. So it's not that I think they're bad, but I think they are overhyped. I think they're fine. They're great. But I'm just like, I don't think about them. Magnetic polish is so unnecessary. <laughs> oh my God. That's funny. I, I think that magnetics are very much you have to love them or you shouldn't buy them. Like that's like just how it is. I'm in my magnetic era right now. So I think that they're fun, but it is, it's a lot of extra work. Hollow Taco still feels like a YouTuber brand with all the quirky inside jokey marketing. I feel like it's very much like an insider kind of a brand, but that's because I started watching Hollow Taco or not Hollow Taco, Christine Simply Neological. I started watching her, so I get a lot of her references, but I think that the more I see people talking about this brand, a lot of them did, didn't even know that she existed. They didn't know who she was and they were enticed by the marketing itself, which for a business such as hers, where it's kind of built off your personality at the beginning, that's a huge step. That's like really successful. So I guess it depends on where you started it from, because like for me, I'll always see it as like, this is Christine of Simply Neological's brand. Like I can't separate the two because I watched her before the brand came out. <laughs> Okay, this one killed me and I read this to my boyfriend and he was like, I'm not commenting on that. And it is, the longer someone's nails are, the more I think they just want to be helpless. I feel targeted with this one. No, I, I laughed out loud when I read this because I think that I can definitely see how it would read that way because when I am around my boyfriend and my nails are really long, anytime I have a package or a can or anything, I wordlessly hand it to him and he wordlessly opens it for me. We could be around other people and they're watching this exchange and it's like, they're like, are you for real right now? Like, did you really just do that, you guys? But it's just become so second nature. Or if he sees me trying to open a can on my own, he's like, Hillary, stop that right now. You're going to break your nails. But even when my nails are at their longest, I can still do everything that I need to do or want to do throughout the day. It's never been an issue. And I think that anybody who acts like their nails are a hindrance, like be real, come on, you guys can do this. Like you can do your normal everyday tasks. It's, it's weird that you think you can't. Shady political views aside, I also hate pop nail polish because of their bottle shape. Yeah, I, at first, when I first saw that brand, I was like, what a weird bottle, interesting. And then I looked at it more and I was like, it looks like a lollipop, like it looks like a paddle. And I heard it doesn't even fit in most nail polish drawers. So I was just like, pass. And then I read more about them and I was like, extra pass. And that was that. I don't feel comfortable supporting Lights Lacquer. I also do not. 
feel comfortable supporting Light Slacker. Um, I was never really interested in the brand to begin with because I never watched Kathleen Lights on YouTube. And then she said a word, said a very bad word on the internet. And I was like, I'm not gonna buy from her nail polish brand. And then I've just never bought from her nail polish brand, so. Zoya charging for the wide brushes will lose them a lot of business. I think that that wasn't necessarily true before, but now that their price increased a couple bucks, I would love to see what their profit was before and after that. I also do believe that Zoya has a very high, I mean, all cosmetics do, but I bet Zoya has a very high markup on their polishes because they can afford to do 50% off sales all the time, buy one, get one free sales all the time. They do uh, like that 70% off sale once a year, maybe. Those are some big numbers. And you know that people, they wait and they buy for those sales. Same with like Bath and Body Works. Like who, if you buy stuff full price from Bath and Body Works, you're a fool because they have a sale every single day. I get their email blast every single day. And I'm like, you guys, I only wanna know about the candles, okay? Cirque Colors formula is super disappointing. I've seen a lot of people say this and I don't know if I just don't have enough Cirques to feel this way. I think that they are sheer and maybe that's why people don't like them. But I've always felt like they showcase that sheerness in their swatch photos. I don't think they lie about it. But then again, maybe I just know they're sheer and I just go into that knowing it. I'm not really sure. I hate the trend of monthly releases. I miss when it was four to six collections per year. Honestly, I apply that to like literally everything in my life right now. Like I see makeup, everything is releasing all the time. My favorite clothing brands, just every brand that I like, it's like every three weeks they're releasing something new. And it really does contribute to that like FOMO feeling or like keeping up with the Joneses type of feeling. And I'm sick of that feeling. I don't like feeling that way. Why are people still buying non-cruelty free brands since there's such a variety of conscious brands? I thought this one was interesting because, you know, I'm one of the people who buys from non-cruelty free brands. And I, it's not something I ever really paid attention to. And I've talked about wanting to go more cruelty free or even vegan as well in my purchasing habits. But the truth is it's just, it's not something I actively think about all the time. I can see why it would be very frustrating for a lot of people who are cruelty free in their life to have put in all this work and effort because it is a lot of work and effort to kind of cut down their collections and do the research when they're buying stuff. And I'm gonna be honest, the sole reason I don't is just, I don't have the mental capacity to take on one more thought in my brain. And I could sacrifice other things in order to focus more on like that cruelty-free aspect. But I, I just, personally, I just don't, I'm staring at myself in the viewfinder because I, I have to face the fact that I have to say this out loud, but it's, I just don't care enough. I, I And I know that's the truth. It's like, if you confronted me with like animals being harmed or in the process of making stuff, I would say like, oh, hell yeah, get rid of that. I don't want that. But it's such a distance thing in my head that it's it's hard to conjure up a tangible feeling. And that's that. Like, I, I know that that's not a good attitude to have, but I think that Oh, if a lot of people were honest, they would feel the same way. Putting your collection upright in drawers where you can't see them defeats the point of collecting. This is something that I thought was interesting. I, obviously I put my collection upright in drawers, so I don't agree. On the flip side, I would love to be able to put up shelves and display a lot of my polish, but then I think about, you gotta dust that, which I don't wanna do. And then I also think about exposure to the sun because exposure to the elements does damage the color of your polishes. It can fade them and diminish them. And so I like having them in the drawers because I just, this is, I live in an apartment. This is not a permanent place in my life. If I ever bought a house, which I won't because I don't want a house. Um, that seems like too much work for me. But if I ever did somehow buy a house for some wild reason, I would have a room dedicated to my nail polish and I would put up shelves for them. So I, I like, I can see both sides. I like visible brush strokes. Girl, what? That's crazy. Well, who likes that? Her, obviously. I don't like hate them, but I think it's one of those things that has been so hammered in our heads that like, this is bad. This is a bad thing about a polish that I just always mention. I'm like, oh, okay, visible br brush strokes. But I think it depends on the color and if the brush strokes are straight. I don't like 
super wavy, wonky, visible brush strokes, but if they're like straight going with the path of the nail, I think that's fine. Sometimes I oil directly before polishing. The girls are thirsty. <laughs> I think like I do that too, especially when I'm taking swatch photos. I'll oil my cuticles and then I will dry out the nail plate to make sure the oil doesn't affect the polish. But when I'm just painting my nails to paint my nails, I'd never do that. I don't, I don't know why. Long nails with a curve or a crooked nail that's easily fixable being left like that, just not for me. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's kind of interesting when people grow out their nails, but they don't shape them in any way, shape or form. Cause to me, I like a very clean looking shape. I like when everything is like, cohesive and all the same length and stuff like that. But I see kind of like 50-50 in the nail world where it's like there are people like me who like everything the same length and shape and size and whatever. And then there are people who are just like, let them grow as they grow. And I think both is fine. It's just one is not for me. Sally Hansen is underrated. I think Sally Hansen is fine, but I don't know if I'd hype it up. I used to really like them because they're cheap and I like the cheap polishes, but to me, I'm like, I go to Sally Hansen for creams and that's about it. I don't really go to them for specialty stuff. So I'm not really sure what they do in that realm. Seasonal polish collections need to reflect the essence of the season. I agree only if they're supposed to be based on that season. Like if you're gonna do a Christmas collection, like, and you specifically call it a Christmas collection, but it doesn't have anything to do with Christmas, that's weird. But if you're like, I'm gonna release a collection based off of, I don't know, Jurassic Park, in the summer like China Glaze did. I don't think it necessarily has to be summery. I think that more has to match the IP that it comes from. But saying like, oh, this is a fall collection and then releasing like spring pastels, kind of weird. Pearl finishes have a right to exist. They have a right to exist and I have a right to hate them. I love old lady or mature colors and finishes. Give me a light pink frost. I will give you all of my light pink frosts. Uh, you can have them. They're yours. There is such thing as too many polishes. I am gonna pretend that I did not read that, but they might be right. I hate hex glitter. I think it's the most basic of all the glitters. I don't hate it, but when, when I first got into polish, I was like, ooh, these are so cool. And now I'm just like another hex glitter topper, like really, but I don't hate it, but for the most part, I'm not super into it. The trend in nail polish Instagram is too deep into consumerism and has become a race for engagement, numbers, and brand deals. I miss the days of nail art that was silly and fun without focusing so much on what will perform well. Yes, absolutely. I, I have this separation in my head of my YouTube channel and my Instagram page. And my Instagram page, I literally do not care about the numbers on it. I Maybe I shouldn't say that, but I don't. I don't, I don't care about the number of followers I have, the number of likes I get, the amount of engagement I get on a post, I don't care. Because I want to post my pictures and that's that. YouTube, I like to see the numbers go up. I think more so because it's just like, I can make a little bit of money here on YouTube. And I think that the effort that goes into YouTube, at least on my end, it's a lot more. So it's nice to see people like and engage with this content here. But Instagram is more fun for me where it's like, I just like to post stuff. I like to post pictures and I like to, you know, talk to my friends and the DMs and stuff like that. To me, Instagram is a social app. And I have noticed, like, I do feel like there's a lot of pressure to consume and buy and, and things like that on Instagram. So I 100% agree with this person. There are too many releases. How do normal people keep up? A lot of people seem to buy and de-stash, buy and de-stash. <laughs> buy and de-stash like that's not really my vibe and obviously i do buy i buy quite a lot and next year i'm not going to be buying as much but i think that this ties in really well with the previous comment and it's just consumerism is i feel like at an all-time high and a lot of people myself included feel like you have to keep buying to keep up in your life and no more for me opi should release other fruits Pineapples have peelings like polishes. Yes, they should. That's a great idea. And I would buy all of them. Nude nails exist only for people who want to have boring nails. I think that, I think a good nude polish, it can look really clean and classy and nice. I, I also think that there is a certain stigma for some people in certain 
professions where wearing bright colors and, and loud things like that, it's really frowned upon, especially for women to do so. So I feel like I could see why somebody would be uncomfortable wearing something like that and would only want to stick to nudes. Cuticle gaps don't bother me. Agree. I mean, I have a, I, I feel like sometimes mine varies from time to time, but like sometimes I have a really big cuticle gap and I don't mean to, it's just a habit. And then the last one that I have time for, um, cutting your cuticles is where it's at. Don't do that. Every time I do that, there's blood everywhere. So don't do that. So that is all I have time for today. If I didn't get to yours, it's not because I didn't like it. It's just this video was getting out of control long. I have to edit this down a lot. I want to thank Ana Luisa again for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check the description box for my link and code to save yourself 20%. And I really hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. But that is going to be it for me. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.